Welcome to Modern Farm Business Podcast. This podcast is designed to help the farm leader bring their business to the next level. We'll cover everything from leadership and finance to strategy and planning. I'm your host, Dean Hefta. Insurance seems to be one of those things that we hope we never have to think about, but a good understanding of some fundamentals can help us avoid a lot of risk, whether we own a large farm, live in town, or work for a corporation. Insurance is all about choosing how much risk we want to accept and how much we want to pass off to somebody else. This implies we should be making a conscious decision about the amount of risk we want, but often we default to things like doing what we've always done, Uh, maybe the opinion of our agent, or even worse, finding whatever the cheapest insurance is we can find. To cover some of the decisions we need to make and to help us understand things we need to know about when it comes to protecting risk and ultimately our livelihood, I've invited Ryan Taylor to join me. Ryan is responsible for farm owners insurance at Water Street Solutions. Welcome, Ryan. Thanks for having me, Dean. I'm looking forward to this conversation because for many people, their insurance coverages are the most important decisions they never think about. So often we don't realize when we're not covered right until it's too late. For our discussion today, I want to focus on three areas. Uh, The issues that you most commonly see when you're doing reviews, an effective process and how that looks for evaluating risk, and some key things that anybody who has an insurance policy needs to know or think about. Sound like a plan? Sounds good. Okay. So in addition to all the operations you insure, you review a lot of farm policies from grain farms to dairies, feedlots to vegetable farms. Tell me some of the most common mistakes or gaps that you find in coverage. Yep. Well, Dean, when we are quoting and and looking at uh, doing reviews for, for potential clients or clients on the insurance side, we, we come to find about eight out of 10 policies are either underinsured or overinsured and paying too much money in premium. Farms have a lot of things going on and, you know, insurance is not a, not a sexy topic. So we want to make sure that, that our clients are covered at a reasonable price and covered properly. So a couple items that I, I tend to see on a regular basis are low liability limits on semis. So semis are large pieces of equipment. And we see a lot of clients who have $100,000 worth of liability per vehicle, what we recommend is at least a million dollars. And that's normally the max you can go. You know, if you have an accident in a semi, a semi were to run a stop sign and, you know, slam into a family minivan or into a school bus, most likely it's going to do more than $100,000 worth of damage. So number one area is low liability limits on large equipment, semis, trucks, et cetera. The second one I've been seeing most recently is grain and storage coverage. Um, You know, the market right now is is basically paying guys to to hold on to grain, you know, at their home, at their farm. So we see clients building bins. Well, once they fill those bins up because of the market prices, they normally don't have adequate coverage to cover the actual grain that's sitting within those bins. Some crop insurance policies might cover grain. Some might not. It's better to be safe than sorry. Grain in storage coverage is very inexpensive, and it's cash sitting in a bin. If there were to be a fire at a bin site, and you only have 700,000 bushel capacity, and you have $100,000 of grain and storage coverage, you're underinsured. That's that's cash sitting in those bins that would go up in flames. So that's that's just another recent issue that we have seen in regards to clients is the the, the grain coverage. Number three that I've been seeing recently is just no work comp policy. Farmers, uh, clients, businesses that have a handful of employees, they're out in the fields and and they have no work comp policy. So, you know, an employee gets hurt or there's an accident on the farm. Without a work comp policy, those medical bills, lost wages would all come out of the farmer's checkbook. You know, that's a hot topic, uh, work comp. Uh, And I think we should stop there for a minute and and talk about that because – Different states have different regulations around that. We know that. And so you have to understand what's going on in my state. But give us some insights on why should I have a policy regardless of my uh, of, of my state and their regulations. So 
you know, maybe it's just me and some family members, or maybe it's me and some part-time seasonal help, or maybe it's me and and full-time staff that I have on, uh, and I'm in a state that does or doesn't require it. What are some things that should spark me to think differently about that? Well, like you had mentioned, we're not we're not attorneys, so we can't give legal advice. But we have come to find a handful of items. Uh, the state of Indiana does not require a work comp policy when it comes to ag, so farmers. The state of Illinois does require work comp, but there are some stipulations. You have to have a certain amount of man hours the previous 12 months, and there are issues when it comes to that. But in regards to why you should have work comp insurance, well, you know, you have one employee and the employee's climbing a bin, and let's say, for example, the employee falls off the bin, um, the employee is paralyzed, and you do not have a work comp policy. Any medical bills, lost wages, work comp policies will pay for the life of the employee. Um, so if an employee is paralyzed and the employee is 40 years old, that work comp policy could possibly pay lost wages, uh, benefits to the family members for life. Without a work comp policy, you know, the, the bills are going to come right out of the, the farmer's checkbook. You know, and for a small farmer, a large claim could take an operation out. Mm -hmm. um, a, a death on a farm with one or two employees with no work comp policy, it, it's just not good. And, and you know, it's, it's better to have that coverage. Work comp insurance, for example, is not overly expensive. It's all based on the amount of payroll that you have. So you could have anywhere from $10,000 worth of payroll up to a half million dollars worth of payroll. You know, your, your premium is based off of the actual amount of payroll that you have. Okay. That's helpful. So it sounds like um, a process needs to be in place to make sure my coverage is right. What do you see and, and what do you believe are some of the key pieces that need to be in place to make sure that that review is happening in an effective way? Well, Dean, the most important thing that I see is communication. Communication with our insureds, with our clients on a regular basis. Farmers tend to buy and sell and trade and, and do a lot of things on a, on a regular basis. Constant communication can make sure that a farmer has not bought or brought in a new piece of equipment and, and there's no insurance on it. Same with semis. Farmers buy and trade semis all the time. You know, constant communication with clients, we're able to know that they traded in a semi for another semi and we're able to add that onto the policy. So just constant communication, not, not on a daily basis. Insurance isn't that. But on a, every two months, I like to, to contact uh, clients, insurers, just to see if anything's new, if they've built a new machine shed or purchased a new semi. You know, you, you don't want to purchase a semi and not have it insured. And then a month later, there's an accident. Uh, that's just, you get into a sticky situation there. So making sure as a farmer or as a business owner, it's a part of kind of my own internal checklist of, okay, we traded combines. I need to let the insurance agent know I've got some new serial numbers. They need to make sure that the policy is updated and just being proactive when something does change. And then having a, an agent that is also proactive, making sure, hey, what are the changes that have happened the past few months? Yep, that's exactly right. A another area that I focus on is annual reviews. So with our, our current clients, when their policy renews 12 months from now, I will go out a couple weeks before the policy renews. I'll visit the farm, sit with the, the farmer. We'll go through the entire farm policy, the entire auto policy. You know, on the farm policy, we want to make sure that we have all the houses, all the machine sheds, all the equipment, any type of ancillary coverages um, that need to be. We, you know, you just you want to make sure you're covered. You want to make sure you're on top of things and that we're not missing anything. In regards to an auto policy, same thing. When I meet with a client on an annual basis, we go through every auto that they have. Do you still own this auto? Do you still own this semi? Do you still own this truck? You know, so that they're there. We're looking at the same things, and they can say, "Oh, you know, I forgot to, I forgot to call you two months ago. We sold the, the fifty-seven Ford, and you know, it, it's just you don't want to pay more in premium for for items that you don't have. So, an annual review is is very beneficial to the to the farmer. And a lot of clients that I talk to in the past, they haven't had annual reviews. So I, you know, I, I feel it's a, it's a big, big um, investment in the client to, to help them understand the type of coverages that they have and that they're not missing anything. 
Perfect. So a final topic is what I'll call the, the need to know. And if I have a policy, what are some of the important things that I, I need to be aware of? It could be around selecting coverage, dealing with claims, you know, the things that people tend to forget to ask or do. Yeah, so there are a handful of items um, that, that clients will will not know or forget. I would say that the number one thing is probably their deductible amounts. So farmers for insurance policies can pick different deductibles for different sections of their policy. So their home, their machine sheds, their equipment can all have different amounts of deductibles. So, you know, you can keep your home a little bit lower, let's say a 1,000 to 1,500 deductible. You know, your machine sheds, your bins, your larger your, your larger buildings with uh, larger values, you can tailor it where you can you can pick a $2,500 deductible or even a $5,000 deductible on outbuildings or bins or bin complexes, which in turn will, you know, lower your premium a little bit. Same on equipment. Um, you can pick and choose. So that that's a that's a big one that I like to communicate with clients is to, to remind them that, that the deductibles that they have on each portion of their farm policy so that it's not a um, – they don't have a claim and they call and, and they're confused about deductibles. It's just, it's just better to be on the same page so that they're aware of what deductibles they have. Same with their semis and autos. You know, a semi and a, and a trailer can probably have a higher deductible uh, com- compared to, a, you know, just a small, light farm truck. So those are items that, that I definitely like to review with clients and just to, like I said, to make sure that they're aware of what deductibles we have. Second item is um, – is replacement cost versus actual cash value. So like I said earlier, when we do a annual review with a client and we're going through uh, values of their machine sheds and values of their bins, I like to ask clients, hey, you know, if this machine shed burns to the ground, what would it cost you to rebuild it in today's today's world, 2017, 2018? It's going to be a lot different than if, you you know, the building was built in 1995 um, so, so I like to talk through each individual building, each individual bin to make sure that the coverages are adequate enough. Uh, and like I said, replacement cost versus actual cash value. Replacement cost coverage is going to be a little bit more expensive, but replacement cost coverage is going to, if there's a total loss on a machine shed, there's going to be enough coverage to rebuild that structure at replacement cost levels. If, if you know, if the farmer only wants actual cash value because it's an older building, we can put that on there as well. If that building burn, burns to the ground, they're not going to get enough to rebuild the building. So those are just a couple different items that I see where there's some confusion in regards to, to coverages. And then one last one that I would mention is regards to uh, semis and uh, large trucks. We find that for older semis, older vehicles, you can either have full coverage or you can have liability only. So the way you know we like to talk with clients is if you have a 30-year-old semi – Um, that's not worth (laughs) what it used to be, you know, it it might be beneficial just to do liability only. You know, if there's a a total wreck, you know, the semi is totaled, it just might be better just to do, it just might cost you a little bit less in insurance. And and the chance that you would replace that vehicle, a 30-year-old semi, with something of that age is probably not realistic. You're going to, you know, probably go out and and buy a newer model. So I just like to walk through those different scenarios with clients to give them an option. You can have full coverage. You can also have liability only on semis and and larger trucks of um, just an older an older older edition. So those are three of the big ones that I always like to bring up with clients, just so that we're on the same page and that communication is is the key. Deductibles, replacement costs versus actual cash value, and Full coverage and versus liability only on larger vehicles. Very helpful. Joining me today has been Ryan Taylor, Agri Specialist with Water Street Solutions. Ryan, if people have more questions on this topic, how do they get a hold of you? Well, they can get a, get a hold of me here at the office. They can reach me at uh, area code 309-680-1211. You can always email me as well. My email address is rtaylor at waterstreet.org. Any questions in regards to insurance? I will I will give you a call or, or respond right back to you. All right. We'll have uh, contact information in the show notes for this episode. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us, Ryan. Thanks for having me, Dean. Now, while insurance usually isn't at the front of our mind, it's certainly a critical component in effectively managing business and personal risk. I hope you were able to think a bit differently about your coverage and 
have some actions you can take to ensure you don't have unexpected gaps in your policies. Thanks again for joining me in this episode of Modern Farm Business. You can find the show notes at modernfarmbusiness.com. If you have ideas or questions, be sure to email me at dean at modernfarmbusiness.com. I'll see you next week.